Hey guys, what's going on? It's your good buddy Sam, of course, and let's do some more Max. So, a little while ago we were looking at how to do some Gantz graph style visuals, and uh, we should continue on in that vein. We got pretty far, but um, ultimately didn't get anywhere too terribly interesting. Uh, so in this video I'm going to show you how to plop a cube down into OpenGL space and then animate it using jit.anim.drive. And if making a cube fly through space sounds too much like a computer graphics trick from the late 60s, uh, just trust me that this will be the, the building block on which we will, this is the foundation on which we will layer um, 21st century intricacies and shaders and OpenGL wizardry to make something that looks really cool. I, I pinky solemnly, I solemnly pinky? I don't know. Anyway, it's going to happen. So let's throw that boilerplate stuff in place. Q Metro 33 toggle. Uh, Q Metro 33 would be the na cool name of the uh, Max MSP band, I think. Um, render, no, jit, jit.gl.render. And then a trigger, bang, bang, erase. You know, this is just the basic boilerplate stuff. It goes into every patch. This is to erase the GL context. This is to actually draw the GL context. We need a place to actually draw to, so we'll make a jit.window. Give it the name uh, Rasputin. There we go. And then we need to put a cube into the space, jit.gl, jit.gl.cube. No, sorry, what am I doing? Grid shape. At shape cube, and then we turn this on, and our view is filled with gray. It's actually because we're down inside the cube. So we'll make an adder UI here. Uh, no, let's do it this way. Let's make a jit.gl.camera, and this is just a handle basically to control the camera. If we make an adder UI here, attach it to the camera, we can now use this to control the position of the camera. If we go down to position, uh, you can see we're at 002, 2 is the z-coordinate, which is how far in or out of the screen we are. If I bump this back to something like 7, now we can see our cube. Um, and our cube looks boring. Even for, even for a gray cube, it still looks boring. We make it a little bit more interesting by adding a jit.gl.material. And honestly, that's not a whole lot better, but... Um, Take my word for it that the cube is at least, uh, it's at least got a material applied to it now. So, uh, we've got our cube, it's sitting there in space, it's not terribly exciting, but, um, you know, we're at least happy to have made it that far. What we want to do now is animate it, and we obviously for that use the jit.anim.drive object. jit.anim.drive works a lot like the jit.gl material object in that you just attach it to the grid shape and then you pass commands to animate to jit.anim.drive and then jit.gl.grid shape will get animated. Uh, the command that we're going to be using here, well, let's turn on turning. So for example, there's, I think, turn? Yeah. Uh, wait, auto rotate, no, wait, rotate two? What does turn zero, one, zero even do? Does it just start it turning? Great, okay, look there, done. See, look how cool that is. It's just a spinning cube. This. <laughs> <laughs> Man, is it really 2013? It's hard to tell. Anyway, there's the cube. It's spinning. That's all great. Um, but now what we want to do is make it move from place to place. Uh, and you can see that if we pass it a command like move to um, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, this will make it move to position 1, 0, 0 over the course of one second. So if we move this over so we can see and then click this, there's our cube moving to the left or right, I guess. If you make this minus one, zero, zero, one, now we can make it move back to the left. Very exciting. Um, let's make it a little more automated and interesting by making this move to command automated. So the first thing that we're going to do is make a metro. And this metro is going to pulse regularly at, say, 250 milliseconds. Uh, let's make that something we can control in case we want to make it go more or less frequently. And then let's generate some noise. Uh, so for that, we're actually going to use a jit.gl, or rather a jit.noise object. Uh, we can use this to generate noise of any size that we want. 
But in this case, we want a one-plane matrix of type float32. So this will make noisy numbers between 0 and 1. And we're interested in making a, a matrix of size 3 for the x, y, and z position. We use a jit dot, uh, rather a, yeah, a jit dot spill to turn that matrix into a list. And then once we've got a, why is my mouse not working all of a sudden? Uh, once we've got this list, we can scale it with nothing but a scale. 0, 1, minus 1, 1. Minus 1, 1. Beautiful. And then, of course, we want to uh, attach this to jit.anim.drive so it will actually move the cube. So we do move to dollar one, dollar two, dollar three over the course of, say, uh, one second. Well, let's make it 0.25, actually. So that now it's going to jump from place to place with every bang of this metronome. And there you go. Look at our spinning cube jumping around through space. Isn't that exciting? Let's suppose, though, that we wanted to make it move uh, more uh, not any more frequently, but faster. That's easy to do. We just need to make this uh, this little guy here variable. So we can throw a pack here. Um, pack uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we'll add in a number box here, attach it to the rightmost uh, output of this pack. Attach this to here. And instead of 0 0.25 here, we'll put in a dollar sign 4 so the number can be variable. And now it's jumping from place to place instantly because we haven't set a speed yet. But we could set it to, say, 1 second. It's going to move very slowly. Or we could set it to 0 0.01 seconds, and it's going to jump from place to place super quick. Let's set it to 0 0.1. Another thing we might be interested in is making our cube move further, uh, giving it a wider range over which to jump around. That too is really, really easy. All we have to do is uh, multiply. We can scale up the numbers coming out of scale and make our cube move a little bit further. Of course, it's a list, so we can't use vanilla multiply. We have to use Vexpr. Vexpr multiplies together vectors. Uh, so we'll just do $f1 times $f2 at scalar mode 1. At scalar mode 1 means that a list comes into the left inlet, but a scalar, or a single number, goes into the right inlet, and it multiplies the entire list by that scalar. So if we put a scalar down here of like, I don't know, 5, now this cube is jumping all over the place. It's crazy. The cube has totally lost its mind. So we've got a crazy cube jumping around space, and that concludes the first very exciting part, a part, partion, uh, portion chunk chapter of this multi-part tutorial on how to do some cool... Ah, look at that cube. I always admire this cube. So much energy, so much uh, joie de vivre, joie de cube. Don't know what I'm talking about anymore. It's very late here in Jerusalem, I have to confess. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. And um, from here, we're moving on to even greater and more exciting um, possibilities for cubes in space. So with that, uh, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you very soon. Ciao.